Hello, friends! Let's talk about Emily Henry, shall we? What's up? If you're new here, my name is Miley, and welcome, or welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to help us toward our goal of hitting a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. So without further ado, let's just jump on into this video because I have a lot to say, okay? Like a lot to say. Today we are going to be talking about the wonderful, the amazing, the glorious Emily Henry. I want to do a definitive ranking and review of all of her books and more specifically discuss her new book, which I just finished, that I have strong opinions about. So if you are interested in videos like this where I talk about an author or a series and rank them, definitely go check out my other videos. I've done an Outlander one, I've done an Akatar one, I've done a Bridgerton one. I will link those in this video. Just keep an eye out on the little eye up here. So I will talk about each one of her books, my thoughts on them, and then stay tuned to the very end of the video because I'll be ranking which ones I love the most to which ones I don't love so much. And my ranking may be kind of surprising to you. It may not though. So definitely stick around and let me know in the comments below what your rankings are if you're an Emily Henry fan. Let's get on into it. The first Emily Henry book that I read is Book Lovers. And this is one of the first books that I read a couple of years ago that got me super into the romance genre. This book was kind of what sparked my interest in the genre as a whole. I love, 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 love this book. This book follows Nora, who is a literary agent, married to her job, very perfectionist. She's an older sister, and she is kind of obsessed with taking care of her younger sister. And her younger sister convinces her to take a month-long sabbatical, if you will, to visit a town called Sunshine Falls. The town is in North Carolina. It's a very, like, sleepy, small-town vibe. We love a good small-town story, you know what I'm saying? So many good characters. So she happens to run into one of her nemeses, I guess you could say, in the literary world, an editor named Charlie, who they kind of butt heads and they have lots of fun banter back and forth. It's very like, I, I don't know if I would even call it sunshine grumpy because she's not super sunshiny, but he is very grumpy. I love him as a character. He is just, ugh, I love him. You watch them really get to know each other. You also see a lot of Nora and her sister's relationship and it's just a very, although it's in a very idyllic, very romance setting, it's a very realistic book in terms of relationships and I really love that. The things that I really love about this book are our two main characters communicate with each other. There's a beautiful scene in this book where they totally just lay it all out for each other, express exactly how they're feeling, have a very mature conversation, and I love when the romance genre does that. Love it, love it, love it. It happens way less than it should. My least favorite kind of story is an angsty story that is all chalked up to miscommunications and misunderstandings because the two main characters just simply can't communicate with each other. Like that to me is a waste of my time to read. I'm not interested in that whatsoever. I like reading characters who feel confident to express their feelings and that is this book for me. It is, oh, I just love it so stinking much. I think I gave this one five stars when I read it and just will always hold a special place in my heart for jumpstarting me into the romance genre. So next I read Beach Read, which I also really, really loved. It's about August and G Augustus, uh, Augie, August, Gus? I think his name is Gus. I haven't read it in a while, you guys. And January, which by the way, I love the name January. I was born in January, so it holds a special place in my heart. But this one is like eerily similar to Book Lovers. She's a writer of romance novels. He's a writer of like literary fiction, completely polar opposites, but through weird circumstances, they end up being next door neighbors at beach houses for a summer. And they strike up a deal that she's going to try to write something in his genre and he's going to try to write something in her genre. Honestly, honestly, this book is really like Book Lovers 2.0. And I guess I should note, I don't know which one came first. So let's check the um, dates. This one is 2020. So my guess is Book Lovers probably came first. Oh no, 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 no. Book Lovers is 2022. So Book Lovers. Oh, interesting. Book Lovers is kind of a carbon copy of Beach Read. Hmm. Anyway, I love this one too. 
There's a lot of fun like over the fence conversations in this which I really like because they are neighbors. They both go outside to ride and to read and they'll just happen to talk to each other over the fence. That was a fun little very romancy element of it. I really 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 liked it but I also because I read Book Lovers first just remember feeling how similar it felt to Book Lovers. So I think I gave this one four stars. Actually, I don't know about that. Let me consult my Goodreads for a second. No, I gave it five stars, probably like I said a million times because it's very similar to Book Lovers and I loved Book Lovers so much. So this one's really freaking good too. Definitely worth the read, love it. Then I read People We Meet on Vacation, which is much different than the plot of the other two. It's about Poppy and Alex who were best friends forever, went on lots of vacations together, I think they maybe even grew up together, can't remember. But at the beginning of the book, we find out that something, some sort of catastrophic event has hurt their relationship and they haven't really spoken much in the past like two years, I think, ish. So we see Poppy try to get Alex to come on their annual summer vacation that they haven't done in a couple of years because of whatever this conflict is. And he miraculously agrees and goes with her. They hash out the issue and essentially figure out that that they're besties but their relationship has always been more than that and they have deeper feelings and it all plays out in this very hilarious vacation gone wrong kind of scenario. It's really really fun too. I love this one. The male character Alex in this is especially fun to read. He's just like very very sweet. It's one of those male characters in a romance that really does no wrong and I know there's a lot of criticism out there for a character like that but I don't mind reading a character like that. I, I really enjoyed both of the characters in this book actually and very much love the story. I will say this one is the slowest to get into and that's my really only complaint about it. It's a little slow to get into um, but once you do get into you read it so freaking quick because it is good. It's so 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 good. So I give this one four stars for that reason but still definitely worth the read. Loved it so much. Great book. Great great book. Okay and then we get to Happy Place which just came out, which is why I have the hardcover. Doesn't it annoy the crap out of you when you have like a collection of books by the same author or a series and they're all paperback except for one or they're all hardcover except for one? That is annoying me so much about this. And normally I would probably just also buy the paperback of it, but it's not worth it because I hated this book. <laughs> I was so looking forward to this book. It was one of my most anticipated reads of this year. I had the date in my Goodreads. I was saving it to read. I had pre-ordered it. It arrived the day it came out. I was like dying to read this, okay? Because I love Emily Henry. I love all her other books. But man, did I not connect with this whatsoever. So it's about two people. And honestly, I just finished reading this yesterday. And I, I forgot their names already. What's her name? I don't even know. Let's try to figure it out. Wynn. Wynn is the boy. W-Y-N. I also really like the names that Emily Henry uses in her books. Harriet. Her name is Harriet and they call her Harry, which I think is so cute. So it's about Harriet and Wynn who have been besties since college and they're part of a larger friend group of like I think it's a total of six of them. And every single year they get together at a cottage in Maine and have like the vacation of their lives, catch up, continue their friendship, reminisce on old times, yada, yada. So the setting of this book is awesome. I love, love, love the setting. It's very fun to read about. And it's dual timeline. So you get their history and their college years, how their romance blossomed, but you also get real time, which is their vacation that they've both shown up to. Two of their friends who were also together surprise them by letting them know they're getting married that weekend. So they feel like they have to stay and they have to be there, even though they actually broke up five months ago and none of their friends know. So you know at the beginning that they're broken up, you know that they are fake dating essentially to keep up pretenses in front of their friends because they don't want to destroy the friendship and they don't want to ruin their friend's surprise wedding weekend either. And so you see them go through the turmoil of having to pretend like they're together even though we know they broke up. And you also see how their romance came to be, which in and of itself is an okay sounding plot. That is certainly nothing new, nothing that hasn't been done time and time again. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be bad or there can't be something unique about it. Unfortunately, that is the case. This book was so boring, you guys. It was so stinking boring. I truly barely finished it. I would have DNF'd it 
if it wasn't for this video that I had already promised to make in my last vlog, which I'll link up here, by the way. I skimmed the last probably fourth of the book because I was like, I don't care about this. I just want to be done. It was so incredibly boring. The two main characters, the guy, Wynn, is incredibly self-deprecating in a way that's just like not fun to read about. There's, you don't really see a growth moment for him until pretty much the end of the book. The female main character, I couldn't tell you a discerning characteristic about her other than the fact that she's heartbroken and we just constantly hear about how she's heartbroken. Here's the problem. We don't really know the reason for their breakup and it's still not super, super clear by the end. There are a lot of factors that go into it. But the main thing we know is that they broke up in a four minute phone call, even though they had been together and completely in love, head over heels for each other for years and years and years. And those two things just don't add up. And we simply watch them continue to not communicate, continue to not have a longer conversation about what happened, why they're not together, what conflict they clearly have with each other. They just don't communicate. All we see are very repetitive scenes about how they're both attracted to each other, but they can't be together and very will they, won't they, mixed with scenes about heartbreak and how much they miss each other. And it's just, it's not a plot. It's not a plot. It's documenting a heartbreak that doesn't actually have to be a heartbreak if the two main characters had just communicated with each other from the beginning. Oh, it's like, what did I say earlier in this video about my least favorite kind of plot to read is a plot that basically is just chalked up to misunderstanding because the two main characters don't communicate how they need to communicate. Hello, that's happy place. I did not like it. I did like, the elements I did like of it were the other friends. I felt like the other friends had more fleshed out personalities than the two main characters, and I wish we would have gotten more of them. In a book like this, where there's scenes about heartbreak and there's clearly conflict, you should have some sort of propelling build that makes the payoff of once they finally do communicate and come back together satisfying. It should make that moment satisfying. When we get to that moment in the book, I'm so over it and I hate it so much that that's not even satisfying for me to read. I'm just like, yeah, okay, great. I'm almost done with the book. I can finally freaking finish it and it's gonna wrap up in a good way because it's a romance and it's an Emily Henry and it's got to. So why did she waste so much time being so repetitive, only harping on a couple of elements of her characters? It just... It was such a total waste to me. And I hate that. I hate that so much because I love all of her other books. So I think this is a mix of A, from the beginning, this is really not my favorite kind of trope to read, but also B, it wasn't well done. I don't think it was a well done execution of that trope because if it had been, I could have appreciated it and liked it still, but it just simply had I just didn't like it. It was bad. It was boring. It was hard to get through. I didn't care about the characters whatsoever. The conflict seemed very silly and honestly confusing and coming back together was cheesy and just silly. I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all, Emily Henry, and I'm very disappointed very disappointed because I wanted to love it. And look at the gorgeous cover. Are you kidding me? This bright pink color and the fun swimming on the front. Like, ugh, it looks like an incredible book, but it freaking sucks, you guys. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll calm down. So those are my thoughts on Happy Place. Let me know down below if you've read it yet, what you thought. Do you agree with me? Am I completely wrong? Tell me why in the comments. But before we go, I do wanna give you my ranking, which is probably obvious at this point. So my least favorite Emily Henry book so far, duh, Happy Place. Just, no, I gave it two stars, you guys. I gave it two stars. And I am not a stingy Goodreads rater. Like I, I'm heavy handed with my five stars, okay? If I love a book, I love it. If I hate a book, I hate it and it gets two stars, sometimes one. <sighs> Do better. Do better, Emily, I'm very disappointed. So that's my least favorite. My third favorite Emily Henry book is People We Meet on Vacation. Definitely worth the read, gave it four stars, love it so much. And then honestly, like we've already explored, my top two are Beach Read and Book Lovers. And honestly, I read Book Lovers first and then I read Beach Read, which is probably why I would put Beach Read in the number two spot and Book Lovers in my number one top spot. But if I had read Beach Read first and then Book Lovers, it may have been switched. I don't know because they're so similar. So that is my ranking. Let me know if you've read all of Emily Henry's books, what your ranking is down below, if it's different than mine or the same as mine. And honestly, let me know some recommendations down below for books like Beach Read, Book Lovers, because this is the kind of stuff I love to read. I think that's it. Thank you guys so much. Let me know down in the comments what you think. And don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.
Bye.